Tonight on Free Minds TV, we'll be doing follow-up reporting in the case of an inmate who died in an Arizona prison. We'll also be getting into proposed gun bans, not quite, in Australia. Also talking about Medal of Honor, the video game, and a whole lot more tonight on Free Minds TV. Welcome to episode 174 of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. As always, it is Toby here with you. And Nick. And Nick, it only took us 89 episodes, but our set... Nearly two years. Nearly two the years. The turning of a new decade. Yes. But our set is finally complete. Uh, we've got our table, we've got our backdrop. Uh, thank you so much to all the people who helped make it possible. Um, the good people here at Cheshire TV where we're broadcasting from, as well as all the viewers who helped us put it together. Um, everybody, really, uh, we didn't do it alone. So this is you guys that made this possible. So thank you. Makes the whole show look real professional. And so it's great. The next step is uh, just our wardrobes. And then uh, we're going to trick people into thinking that we're a real professional TV show. Yeah. Maybe we actually will be. I mean, we're on over 20 stations. We have a real set, I, I guess. I guess it's only professional if it's how you earn your living, isn't it? Mm, I guess so, that's unless, gonna... Unless something significant changes, but we can be sort of par We can appear to be professionals. Well, if we earn our living this look... way, that's all gonna be up to the viewers, but I mean, they have allowed us to build this, build this wonderful set, so thank you to them. Um, we also do have a ton of show content to get into, Nick. So we are going to be talking about stories from around the country and around the world. We are going to be getting into a gun ban in Australia uh, that may include cap guns or some kind of registry. I don't know, it's, it's a hilarious, asinine, crazy story. It's hilarious story. to us because we're in the U.S. and yeah, we don't at least actually we, have to deal with it. We'll be getting into that um, as well as a case of one government urging its citizenry to drink and smoke more for the good of the nation. Yes, if you want to... Give you three guesses. <laughs> if you really want to be patriotic, how do you do that? Well, uh, jug a, guzzle a thing of vodka and maybe smoke a carton of cigarettes. Which country is it? We'll be getting into that. But first, we do want to do a follow-up story. I think we reported on this some time back. This is coming from Arizona, where an inmate died. Yes, inmate Marisa Powell was kept out in an outdoor cage in the desert for hours in 2009 until she died, according to the Perryville prison officials. But the Maricopa County Attorney's Office on Wednesday decided not to prosecute anyone in the case, saying the evidence isn't there and there are too many conflicting statements in order to press charges against anyone. So what exactly happened here? Well, back in 2009, uh, Marcia Powell, who was being held uh, for charges of prostitution, uh, was put in an outdoor cage with absolutely no shade for four hours. While that might not sound like very hot, when you're in the Arizona desert with absolutely no shade, things get pretty warm pretty quickly. Um, she was out there for four hours, the maximum time allotted for such an outdoor cage, which have since been banned. It was only two hours at the time, but she was there for double time. Um, her core body temperature was 108 degrees, when she was finally uh, taken out of the uh, outdoor cage that she was being put in. Her eyeballs were dry, her mouth was parched, said Donna Ham, an inmate rights activist. The state's medical examiner office listed Powell's official cause of death, death as dehydration and said she had numerous first and second degree burns on her face and body from being put in the direct sunlight with absolutely no shade. Um, it should also be noted that there are numer numerous reports saying that she was asking for water and de denied water several times while prison officials are ruling, uh, saying that that's uh, a false statement. Uh, the state's um, uh, medical examiner's office say that she was very dehydrated and had, had no hydration while she was out there. The ADC representative disciplined the 16 individuals involved in the Powell incident. Two quit in lieu of being fired. Three were fired and 10 others were suspended. Ham told uh, CBS 5 News, Ham, the activist rights person here, uh, said there will be no civil lawsuit because uh, Powell had no family to press, uh, to pursue any kind of a civil lawsuit. So everybody who got inv um, was involved in this, some of them had slap on the wrist, some of them, some of them lost their job. Jobs, Marisa Powell was cooked to death. She died while being put in the hands of the state for a victimless crime, and no one's facing any charges here, Nick. Now, this is a, the same prosecutor's office that routinely 
will uh, go after people for leaving a dog in the car for too long or um, leaving a kid in a car. Those people go to jail. Yet if you put someone in the desert heat for hours until they literally cook to death, there's no charges filed. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look, even in a situation where people are being kept as prisoners, if you were to, I, I think the heat to some extent, I think people might think, oh, well, she just overheated. Well, what if it had been freezing cold outside? I mean, if this was done to, say, American POWs, as it was in some cases in history in places like Korea, where you're left outside to die of exposure in a cage, typically in those cases, if we were capable of it, the guards were tried and then promptly shot because that's considered a war crime. You're basically killing people who are just supposed to be prisoners. They haven't been sentenced to death. They've just been sentenced to be held in, in prison, rightly or wrongly, for a certain period of time until, in the case of a war, till the war is over, in the case of somebody who's been convicted of a relatively minor offense, until they've served the, the entirety of their sentence, which might be a year, it might be two years. It's certainly not the rest of their lives with a much shorter, <laughs> abbreviated well, end to their life. Not only that, but a death sentence probably would have been much better because at least she could have had a peaceful death with a firing squad or something rather than a gas being chamber, cooked lethal to death. injection is a much better way to go than being left to die. For four hours heat. slowly cooking and in Arizona, and I mean, we're not talking about like it was 85 well, and she, you know, she wasn't in very good health anyway and she no. happened to die. I mean, in places like, from what I've heard about places like Phoenix, it can easily be 115 degrees. Yeah. Or, I mean, he, her core body temperature just, was over 108 right. degrees, so it it's was It's about warm as out. humane as locking somebody outside when it's 20 below outside right. and seeing if they survive. And yet no one faces charges for this? You can just pass the buck until no one's responsible? I, I mean, it just seems so egregious, especially, I mean, there was no victim in her crimes. I mean, even if she was some kind of a horrible uh, rapist or murderer, she this wouldn't be right, but she wasn't. She was, uh, uh, I guess, uh, from what the story here says, a, a kind of a low-life prostitute, um, earning her living, selling her body for sex, which our stance on Free Minds TV is, while it's not a good idea, there's no victim here, so it shouldn't be a crime. So Certainly I, not one that's punishable by death. Uh, a torturous death. I mean, it, it just seems crazy here. Uh, same prosecutors will go after you if you lock your dog in a car. And it doesn't die. No, no harm, no foul. I mean, yeah. you just you're being inhumane to your dog. Yet, if the state does it to a woman and she boils to death, oh, whatever. We're all on the same team here. Uh, there's too yeah. many conflicting statements. All the well, guards that, that are is, teaming I mean, up that, together. That is part of the problem. Is that when you're talking about abuses in the criminal justice system, whether it's in in the police force, in the courts, or in the prisons, they're all really part of the criminal justice system. And that's why there is, I think, a certain reluctance to see people like police officers or prison guards charged. When people who work for other government institutions outside the criminal justice system, while they're still not really accountable in the same way that us regular private citizens are in reality, I think that they are somewhat more accountable than people in government who work directly for the criminal justice system because Basically, they work for the same employer. The same person cuts the judge's checks, cuts the guard's nope. checks. In the end, they're really all basically working as part of the same system in the same industry, if you will. Right. I mean, the very least, if they couldn't get any uh, kind of charges that would stick because all the inmates are backing each other up seems to be what's going on here. All the inmates are saying, well, I, that's not what, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, so no one wants to talk, essentially. There's always negligence. At, at the very least, there's the negligence. They had a duty of care. They neglected their duty. Uh, so, anyways, it, it, it's stories like this that just get under my skin because it, it just it shines the light on how unfair the system really is. Anyways, uh, we do need to move along. We do need to go over to the land down under, way over. Where is that? It's under, kind of uh, behind you. Behind me, down here. It's um, down there, way below Japan. Down by my butt. We've got a story about those Australians, Nick. All right. Well, we do have a story coming out of Queensland, actually. Australia is one of those countries like us that actually has states instead of provinces or counties or something weird. So part of Australia. And in Queensland state, the Queensland state government is looking to make any item which appears, basically looks like a gun, to ha it must be licensed under several changes to the Weapons Act, which apparently is a piece of legislation in that state, 
Even guns made out of materials as unlikely as soap or plastic may have to be kept under lock and key if they could, quote, reasonably be taken to be a weapon. And that's very vague language, especially when you're dealing with a society that much more so than in the United States, you're probably dealing with people who, as a whole, the average person on the street is probably more afraid of guns, less familiar with firearms from a technical perspective, and a lot of people are really stupid in what they'll identify as a real gun and what they won't. I mean, well, obviously, if you're dealing with something that's a real-to-life, one-to-one replica that looks like it's made out of actual materials, it would be difficult for anybody to tell the difference without actually ob examining it up close. But even something like... There's a fly in here. I'm sorry. It's, it's not cooperating. Fly. Even something like a squirt gun, in many cases, can be confused by some people to be a real gun because they don't really know very much about guns. So what's reasonable? What's a reasonable copy of a firearm? Well, certainly if you take off that little orange tip, I mean, there's a ton of guns out there. Your regular basic cap gun um, uh, looks like a real gun. Kind of, except that somebody with at least decent vision can tell that it's made of plastic. Real guns aren't actually made of plastic. Nick, Just an FYI to everybody out there. Nick, the barrels are made of plastic. On how many stories where uh, people are shot here in the United States because police mistake their wallet for a gun. So, I mean, what's mistaken for a gun? We're talking about the government here. And this isn't in a, a gun-friendly nation like the United oh, States. Well, this is in Australia. Yes, where they don't have that Second Amendment around. To right. Protect. Well, the, he, he, here's the government trying to clarify the position here. And it doesn't do much to put anyone's mind at ease. The government position, and this is just, they quote, a government source, they don't name a person. Quote, if it looks like a gun and feels like a gun, it will have to be licensed, said the government source. We just want to know where they are. Did they they have just to? want to know, Nick. Why? They want to know where all You're the toy guns toy. in the world are. It, the, the, the reporting here from the Courier Mail says it is unclear how the draft affects toy guns. So obviously very vague. How realistic does it have to be? It's not really being spelled out by the legislation. It's going to be arbitrary. It's going to be arbitrary enforcement is the problem here. It's going to be up to a judge to determine whether it was reasonably close so to So it's going to be just another reason that they can go after people. And this isn't some piddly little like $50 fine if you don't register your fake gun. Failure to license an imitation weapon will carry a maximum $4,500 fine. I don't know if that's Australian or US dollars. Under the proposals, an incorrect storage uh, An incorrect storage carries a penalty of seven hundred and fifty dollars. Is there such storage. a thing uh, as incorrect storage of a toy well, a gun? Fake gun. It has to be under lock and key. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. The, well, you 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 don't want the kids to get a hold of it in case they shoot themselves, right? With a fake gun. Yeah, this the, can be dangerous. The gun that doesn't actually work as a firearm. It. I guess this legislation is also imposing restrictions on the ownership of laser pointers. Hmm. Yeah. Tougher penalties for selling items such as crossbows, bulletproof vests, and knuckle busters, dusters, whatever they're calling it in Australia, without the appropriate license. Nick, why can't I put on a bulletproof vest without a license? It's a good question. Well, they're talking about selling them. Uh, right. Well, obviously, I'm going to buy items. it, right? If yeah. I'm, or I could steal it, I guess. <laughs> but that's also a crime. Yeah. So I, lawfully, the I laser can... pointers, I don't really get. I guess the argument with the bulletproof vest is that it could assist criminals in committing a crime. Or I could want to wear it because I'm paranoid and I want to feel safe. Right, because you can't actually own right. many guns that are useful for self-defense in right. Australia. So you want to just try to stop the bullets from hitting your body. Well, you're not even... And I think if someone mugs you in a place like Australia, you're not even allowed to fisticuffs back. In so, the UK, <laughs> well, large, I don't know about Australia. Large, it's in, probably in not that UK, far, but... In the UK, that's the case. It's People have been run. charged for defending themselves. So, I mean, you should at least be allowed to have a bulletproof vest, but no, no, no. We're the government. We know best. We license your toy guns, put them under lock and key, and don't ever think about putting on a bulletproof vest because we're the government, Nick. And we want to know where your toy guns well, are. Well, largely in place in the UK, I guess a lot of the police force is actually, they're more concerned about stab protection, so they carry stab-resistant vests because, well, criminals in Australia, they typically, or rather in the UK, either place really, you can still kind of own guns in Australia though. Criminals in those places where guns have been outlawed for the general law-abiding population, well, criminals there don't really need to carry guns because the populace has been disarmed at this point in places like the UK to where they can't even carry a knife for self-protection or defend themselves with their hands in mm. some cases. So they don't actually need to up the ante to a gun. They'll just stab you. Mm. Well, that's nice. Because I always like a good stabbing. Anyways, Nick, we do need to move on. When we come back, we're going to be talking about Medal of Honor.
It's got some people up in arms, Nick, to the point. Not the Medal of Honor, but Medal of Honor, the video game. Okay. Is there the oh no it's, not it's like the, not the, the military metal. decoration right the video game the video game you know shooting people in a war well, sometimes combat there's stories zone. about the metal bombs that's true that's true we're going to be talking about the video game and how it has been banned on military bases for a certain uh, we'll be getting into that why has a video game depicting violence been banned on U.S. military bases and why do some people want to push the ban farther we'll also be getting into that story about which government wants you to drink and smoke more to be patriotic. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. This is Free Minds TV. <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. This is Mark Edge from Free Talk Live and you're watching Free Minds TV. Welcome back to the show. It is still Toby here with you. And I'd like to invite the viewers to log on to our website. Freemindstv.com is where you can go or freemindsmedia.org. It does say freemindsmedia Free Media here. Right back here. That's because we do the radio show. We sometimes do some blogs up on the website. Anyways, log on to our site. From there, you get all the archives. Like we said, we were discussing uh, this set, episode 85. So that means there's hundreds, if you're a first time viewer, there's 173 other episodes out there uh, where we started out the show without a table, then we upgraded to a card table. Uh, by the time you came along, Nick, I think we had built something out of plywood. It didn't work too well, <laughs> it was enormous, and then we ended up going, Back to the Go card back table. to the card table. Um, we we're, we've had plants in the backgrounds of some of the shows. Anyway, there was a, some color. Just it was a great a, a long road that got us here. Years and years. All those archives. Not only of the TV show, also the radio show archives are all up there. Um, uh, episode 100 of the radio show of us celebrating being on terrestrial radio next week, actually, Nick. So uh, the other 99 episodes, plus all the podcasts before, so much content, hundreds and hundreds of hours. It's now all for free. You used to have to pay for it. Not anymore. Free Minds of Media, freemindstv.com, either or. Anyways, Nick, we do need to be, move along. We've got a ton more to get into. We're going to be talking about Medal of Honor video game, why it's banned on U.S. military bases. But first, I came across a story that... Ah, it just it made me chuckle. This is coming from the Orange News. Russian finance minister has urged his countrymen and women to support the country by what? Drinking and smoking more. Yes, Alex Kudrin called for an increased consumption of tobacco and alcohol in a bid to boost the state's revenue. The reports the Metro. Quote, if you smoke a pack of cigarettes, that means that you are giving more to help solve social problems, commented Kudrin. People should understand those who drink, those who smoke, are doing more to help the state. Uh, Russian is noted for its high consumption of both cigarettes and tobacco, as well as the lowest duties on cigarettes in all of Europe. So, even with these low duties, Nick, you will still, these low taxes, you will still be helping the state if you drink more and smoke more. We've been saying this on the show for it's years. It's not that we're actually advocating as a matter of personal health. But as far as where the government's coming well, from, as far as helping them to boost well, their revenue and then killing you off before you well, start that was picking the up on the, the social, um, Ill, like when you get old, you get social right. security, Medicaid. People will typically make the case that smoking-related diseases or drinking-related diseases typically cost society more. Now, that's sort of a non sequitur. It doesn't really matter so much if you have a private system in healthcare where people actually have to pay for their own medical care because then it's not really a cost on society. It's a cost on individuals, whether through higher insurance premiums or through out-of-pocket costs. So what it costs an individual, I don't really consider that a societal cost anyway. Even with the, up until recently, largely government controlled and at this point basically government-run healthcare system we're going to have here in the United States, even with that, yeah, those smoking-related diseases do kill a lot of people. They do lead to quite a few medical bills, but not in, me in many ways. It's cheaper to pay the medical bills to treat somebody in the last couple of months uh, when they're dying from, say, smo uh, smoking-related emphysema, cancer, or heart disease than it is to have them live another 20 or 30 years relatively healthily and draw benefits on things like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Yeah, not only that, but you're also collecting revenue the entire time that they are living and drinking or smoking because uh, things like tobacco and alcohol, these um, sin, there's sin taxes on them, Nick. And if you're going to drink them, you're going to be high, paying high premiums uh, for the right to buy them to the government. 
So they're going to be making buco bucks in the tunes of billions and billions of dollars. I mean, we've talked about on the state how, in a sense, smokers should be thanked for um, allowing education to take place in some circumstances. I mean, so much of these, this tax money that's generated that pays for the public schools out there is smokers and drinkers. Yeah, and people who gamble through things like the state lottery or even when they privatize right. gambling, usually a lot of it goes to education. So it's not to say that those are good activities. No, we're never advocating. advocating them, but what the, we're trying to get away from this, this demonization of saying right. you're the low scum of society. Well, in a sense, Actually, they're also they're, the society, people that make society turn. Yeah, they're, well, they're, or at least government large ass. They're right. paying for okay. a lot of these services that people blame smokers and So if you're a small government person like us, we should be advocating uh, people quit smoking and drinking and all sorts of sin taxes because that only helps to propagate the bloated big government syndrome. Yes? Yeah. All right. So all well, sort of. They'll just tax something else. They're already looking at expanding fruit. taxes on things like, <laughs> well, sugary drinks. And in many cases, fruit cocktail, fruit juice cocktail, is subject to well, higher taxes than taxed. it used to be. Anyways, the point well, of this... Well, but special taxes because it's a syntax on sugar. Mm, the point of this story is, though, one of the highest tax items is cigarettes, is tobacco. And I just found it humorous to actually find a government that admits that and says, yes, smoke and drink more because we are poor. Well, I think, I think some of the other government officials were saying, no, that it's not a good idea. Well, in this article, but the finance they minister they thinks it's great. Well, he, of course, he's the one who has to deal with finances. <laughs> I guess they're just not as politically correct in Russia. <laughs> They're not as afraid to say what's on their mind. No. Anyways, uh, just like the show, right? <laughs> Bump well, into people you. in government, are, a lot of the citizens are probably afraid to say what's on their mind. Yeah, they'll never allow If they disagree. In the government. Anyways, yeah. we do need to move on, Nick. Uh, we've got another story to talk about that is, it's just, it's craziness, Nick. It's talking about Medal of Honor video game, a violent video game where you're shooting people in the face in a lot of circumstances. First person shooter game, very realistic, very game. real graphics. Yeah. It, personally, it's a little disturbing for me to even watch some of the trailers because it is going up and shooting someone in the face, and it's in some. You wouldn't play the video game. I don't really. You've never played a violent video game. I don't play video games. I. You've never played violent video games. I've played Tetris. I've played Pac-Man. I guess he eats ghosts. Never That's played Halo. Violent. Never. No, I don't. There's too many. There's too many buttons on there. <laughs> I'm an You're old person. You're one of the few. You're one of the few. I'm an old person. But anyways, I did want to point out before you get into this, I do know one person, uh, one whole group of people who have played video games. And this is a generalization. I'm going to make it, Nick. People who go into armed services. You think a lot of those people play those first-person shooter games? A lot of the people I knew who enlisted did. All right. Yeah. Take it away, Nick. Um, sales of Medal of Honor video game blocked on U.S. military bases. A uh, small victory was all it said on the subject line of Karen Meredith's email, but for the Silicon Valley military mom who lost her son in the Iraq war, the decision this week by a U.S. military base exchange is not to carry the controversial Medal of Honor video game was still great news. I'm thrilled, said Meredith, whose son, Lieutenant Ken Ballard, perished in 2004. She has set off a storm of protest against Redwood City-based Electronic Arts and its first-person shooter game, which allows players to pretend they're Taliban fighters killing American soldiers in Afghanistan. You can play as either side, so I'm presuming that a lot of people play as the American forces as well. Yeah, you know, Nick. Which is not controversial, apparently. No, you're, it's, it's only controversial if white people are being shot. <laughs> You know, it's, it's and there funny have been a lot of video games where you can play both sides. The they did previous the, ones, right. Medal of Honor, you could be a German, you could or be a Jap Nazi. Or, or a Japanese. <laughs> and yet, for some reason, if you're a Taliban fighter, you can no longer... It's just. I can understand why there's some sensitivity on the part of people who have, say, lost family members. Right, but I think it's displaced anger here. We should be trying to fight against uh, going to war uh, for corporations rather than being all upset at a video game uh, depicting... What's yeah. going on there? I mean, and why aren't you? Why shouldn't the outrage be placed at uh, the government for getting us into this war and causing her son to perish for no good reason? But instead, she's going say. after a video game because they allow you to play as a Taliban fighter. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I've heard from people all over the world. Many of them have said about this game. So at least this has started a conversation. She said um, they point out that a lot of. U.S. military personnel actually defend the game and think it's kind of a stupid ban. Well, yeah, it's probably a lot of them well, got into the military because they loved these first-person shooter games. Well, and I think it's, I think uh, particularly the Air Force actually 
looks to kids who play games a lot to recruit. You know, it's funny. And they've actually, I think, I forget the name of the video game, but I think the Army actually released one, American Soldier or something like that. It wasn't that. all that great. The, it was, it, no, there wasn't very much shooting involved at all. But it was actually, like, too realistic. It was more like a training simulator than, than a, a video game, so it wasn't actually that much fun. I played it a little bit. But they released that as a recruiting tool. So the Department of Defense is very open to some video games, not open to ones that, you know, in some ways, if you're going to be showing the, vi you know, military violence in a game, and game games are to some extent an art form, sides. it's more realistic. Yeah, is this... It is realistic. I mean, if you actually want to depict a war, it's not all that unreasonable to say what's it look like on the other side. Is this woman going to be against unbiased news reporting from that's going on there too? I mean, like. <laughs> If there's any news reporting that <laughs> reports on the side of the Taliban, I don't want to hear it. No one should be allowed to read it as they should ban it. I don't know. It's crazy to think that a video, a violent first-person shooter game is banned on U.S. military bases, yet these same people are the same people who actually do go out there and shoot people in the face well, for that, real. That, don't play the game. That's your job. For real. I mean, that's the military's job it, is, okay. is to basically enact I'm, violence against I guess people in real life. So my problem, Nick, is I'm failing to connect the dots on what exactly is wrong here, except some overly emotional mother who's displaced her anger on the part of, what is it, uh, some video well, game company. It doesn't actually do all that much. It's mostly a symbolic ban is largely what this is because it, the Army and Air Force post exchanges aren't going to sell it on base. People living on base can still order the games at places like GameStop, as one named in here. They're just going to ship the games to the nearest store that's off base, and then these military personnel can pick it up and bring it back onto base and play it. It's not a ban, it's not saying military personnel can't play the game, own the game. Well, I don't think this woman's done it. She's gonna continue and try She's to gonna continue, more. but it's unlikely that it's gonna go anywhere. Out the US military, I wouldn't have thought it would go this far, Nick. But the US military has basically unrestricted power to restrict, do whatever it wants to military personnel on it bases. It still seems And they silly, haven't even it? banned the game. Doesn't it still they seem have silly? They don't about First Amendment restrictions. Okay, it well. does, it is silly. But if the Department of Defense isn't gonna actually out and out ban the game, which, from what I'm reading, it's just a ban on sales at the post exchanges, which are basically so government-run. Well. So far. But if that's all the U.S. military is going to do when they could just out-and-out out ban it if they wanted to, especially at least on base, I don't think it's going to go anywhere beyond Anyways, that. Anyways, we're out of time, Nick. Different opinion, fmtv at freemindsmedia.org is the email address, or log on to our website, and we have contact info from there. Until next week, it has been Toby here with you. And Nick. Episode 100 of us being on Terrestrial Radio this Sunday and every Sunday. 3 p.m. Eastern Time, freemindsmedia.org. Have a good night. myself an A for that one.